Hello friends, welcome to Agriculture channel. I am Varsha Gaitonde and today I would like to discuss about one exciting personalities and she is none other than Barbara McClintock. She was a great lady of genetics, even I can't say exactly genetics. She contributed to many allied sciences also. She contributed for genetics, plant breeding, medicine, then uh, other things also. Okay. McClintock born in USA on 16th June 1902. She offered with Nobel Prize for her enormous work in the field of physiology and medicine in 1983. She was also awarded with Wolf Prize in medicine in 1981. To talk about Wolf Prize, this is uh, given by Israel government every year for the humble and kind cooperation among the people. McClintock was also awarded with several other prizes but among these two are the most important one. She died on September 2, 1992 in USA only. She worked in two main universities or institutes that is Carmel University, Missouri and Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory. Let us see her work one by one. Barbara McClintock worked on literature review of cytological investigations in cereals with particular attention to wheat during her master degree program. Her PhD thesis title was A Cytological and Genetical Study of Triploid Maze. She completed her PhD in 1927. In 1929, she published the first ideogram of maize chromosomes. In 1931, RG linkage group with the smallest maize chromosome 10 was worked by her. Along with Creighton, in 1931, provided the first demonstration of cytological evidence for crossing over in which chromosomes break and recombine to create the genetic reassociation. She reported the order of the genes on chromosome 9 as WX, SH and C beginning at the middle of the long arm and running towards the end of short arm. The new system designed SPM for suppressor mutator in 1954 after she worked with the ACDS system was also done by her. McClintock's own innovative cytogenetic techniques allowed her to confirm Morgan's ideas and these techniques are numbered among her greatest contribution to the science. She herself and her graduate student Harriet Crichton provided first experimental proof that genes were physically positioned on chromosomes by describing the crossing over phenomena and genetic a recombination. As you know, the breakage, fusion, bridge cycle were also given by them. Along with that, crossing over phenomena and genetic recombination in maize was studied by these two scientists. Although Thomas Hunt Morgan was the first person to suggest the link between genetic traits and the exchange of genetic material by chromosomes, 20 years elapsed before his ideas were scientifically proven largely due to limitations in cytological and experimental techniques. McClintock's own innovative cytogenetic techniques allowed to confirm Morgan's ideas. She helped Beadle to sort out neurospora chromosomes. Beadle with Edward Tatum built on this work and developed one gene one enzyme theory using neurospora. McClintock developed a technique using carmine staining to visualize maize chromosomes and showed for the first time the morphology of 10 maize chromosomes. She produced the first genetic map for maize linking regions of chromosome to physical traits. She demonstrated the role of telomere and centromeric regions of chromosome that are important in the conservation of genetic information. Using the staining technique, 
McClintock and Crichton proved the existence of chromosomal crossover. This happens while the cells that take part in sexual reproduction are being made in a process called meiosis. In animals, these are the eggs and sperm cells. Through her work with X-ray mutagenized mice, she identified ring chromosomes which form when the ends of single chromosome fuse together after radiation damage. For this evidence, McClintock hypothesized that there must be a structure on the chromosome tip that would normally ensure stability. She showed that the loss of ring chromosome at meiosis caused variegation in maize foliage in generations subsequent to radiations resulting from chromosomal deletion. During this period, she demonstrated the presence of nucleolar organizer region or we generally say it call it as NOR on a region on maize chromosome 6 which is required for the assembly of nucleolus. In 1933, she established that cells can be damaged when non-homologous recombination occurs. During the same period, she hypothesized that tips of chromosomes are protected by telomeres. Coming to the information about breakage, fusion, bridge cycle and the centromere. In 1936, McClintock began using X-rays through which she discovered the large scale mutations that can arise from breaking, fusion and bridging of the chromosomes. This BFB cycle discovered by her leads to chromosomal instability which means daughter cells have a different number of chromosomes from the cell that produced them. Although she discovered this phenomena during 1930, but it uh, was very, uh, means uh, it took a lot of time to become popularized. This chromosomal st instability is uh, one of the region for making or uh, causing cancer. In 1938, she analyzed the cell genetics of chromosome centromere for the first time, described how it functions. Many characteristics of organisms are demonstrated by heredity that is by their genes which are stored in the chromosomes inside their cell nuclei. McClintock studied the corn hereditary characters, example different colors of its kernel. She studied how these characters are passed down through generations and linked this to changes in the plant's chromosome. During 1940s and 50s, she proved that genetic elements can sometimes change position on a chromosome and this is caused by nearby genes to become active or inactive. Coming to the introduction to maize and about transposons, maize particular those plants that produce variably colored kernel because each kernel is an embryo produced from an individual fertilization. Hundreds of offspring can be scored on a single year making maize an ideal organism for genetic analysis. Indeed, maize proved to be the effective or effect organism for the study of transposable elements which were discovered during the middle part of the 20th century. She was revolutionary in the suggest suggested that organism's genome is not stationary entity but rather is subject to alteration and uh, rearrangements. Concept was met with criticism from scientific community at that time. The role of transposons eventually became widely appreciated when McClintock was awarded with Nobel Prize in 1983 in recognition of this and her many other contribution in the field of genetics. Coming to the concept of jumping genes. Beginning in 1944, she studied the relationship between color patterns on corn plants and look of their chromosomes. McClintock work was revolutionary in the it is suggested that an organism's genome is not a stationary entity but rather is subject to alteration and rearrangement a concept that was met with criticism from the scientific community at that time. 
However, the role of transposons eventually became widely appreciated after 1960s. One of the colors she was most interested was purple. She wanted to understand the genetic reasons for purple spotted corn. Corn plants from one generation to next generation were self-pollinated by her. Comparing offspring with parent chromosomes, she found it looked like offspring chromosome which were reorganized versions of parental chromosomes. Parts of the chromosome looked like they had been snipped out and shifted to entirely new location. She discovered parts of the chromosome. She called them as disassociator and activator that could cause insertion, deletion, a reallocation of genes in the chromosome. In short form, we can say it was the major cause for making mutations. The theory of the time said genes were in fixed position on the chromosome and uh, she work, her work showed that it was wrong. The disassociator could break the chromosome and alter the behavior of genes around it but only in the presence of activator. Purple color could be switched on and off by the disassociator. In other words, physical traits were being controlled by disassociators in the presence of activators only. In 1948, she discovered that disassociators and activators could transpose, in other words, jump to different places on the chromosome. They are often therefore called transposable elements. Transposons controlled genes on the chromosome. They could inhibit or modify their behavior. This explained why an individual living things like a person can produce all sorts of different cells even though every cell has the same genetic code. The gene controllers make the difference by giving specific instructions in specific circumstances. In McClintock's view, genes could no longer be thought of as unchangeable instructions handled from parents to offsprings. They could react to specific circumstances in the environment. Mobile genes could jump around within chromosomes and switch physical traits on and off. She studied the phenomena until 1950 before she began publishing her work. In the scientific world, that believed genes were very stable and could only change a little at a time, her findings were so radical that she was worried about how people would react to them. Coming to the actual mechanism, how it works, McClintock worked with the phenotypic character of maze provided by Rollins E. Emerson, a scientist who rediscovered the Mendel's law of inheritance that maize had genes encoding variegated or multicolored kernels. These kernels were described as colorless except for spots or streaks of purple or brown. Emerson has supposed that the variegated streaking was due to an unstable mutation. That means before McClintock Erickson was one, uh, Emerson was one scientist who studied this particular mobile genetic elements, but he could not identify them as transposons. After McClintock started working on this particular transposon concept, she understood that the mobility of genes or the jumping genes are because of the four major genes. The first gene is C and C dash. C, C dash is a dominant allele on the short arm of chromosome 9 that prevents color from being expressed in the earlier on layer of the maize kernel causing a so called colorless phenotype. This is also known as an inhibitor allele. C is a recessive allele on the short arm of chromosome 9 that leads to color development. BZ it's a dominant allele on the short arm of chromosome 9 that leads to purple phenotype. Here I will show this capital BZ is a dominant allele that gives purple phenotype whereas small BZ is a recessive allele on the short arm of chromosome 9 that leads to dark brown phenotype. Okay. 
Next is DS. This is a genetic location on the short arm of chromosome 9 at which chromosomal breakage occur. That means DS is a broken loci. AS. AS is the fourth gene that is a factor of unknown location that impacts the expression of DS. Afterwards it was named as AC, AC and DS. In the presence of AC only DS works. McClintock bred females which were homozygous for C and BZ that was lacking DS. Here males that were homozygous for C dash means dominant one, BZ dominant and DS. Three dominant were crossed with the uh, homozygous female to yield heterozygotes with a luron layer of the genotype like this. Okay, what she did? She crossed homozygous female with the male, homozygous male only because all are in capital form here. And after crossing this, she got a heterozygous with a luron layer that had genotype C dash, CC, BZ, 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 and DS. Here one thing you should note that in double fertilization sperm provides one set of allele and the egg provides two because of the presence of dominant inhibitor allele C dash. The offspring kernel were expected to be colorless no matter what their genetic makeup at the BZ locus. In fact upon cross breeding many of these kernels were colorless. McClintock also observed that many curlers with colorless background and varying amount of dark brown spots or streaks and she concluded that individual cells in those kernels had lost their C dash and BZ alleles means dominant forms because of the chromosomal break at the DS locus. Without either C dash allele that uh, prevent the color expression or BZ that gives purple allele, the cells that had experienced a breakage at the DS locus ended up with some, some brown coloring. Within the affected seeds, the amount of colored streaking or spotting depended upon when during seed development the somatic cell mutation at DS occurred. If the mutation occurred early in development, then as the one mutant cell continued to divide, more cells in the mature kernel would have the brownish phenotype and the spot or streak of color on the kernel would be larger. If the mutation occurred later in the developmental stage, spotting would be smaller because the kernel would undergo less cell division prior to maturity. To summarize this, what McClintock did, see she crossed the homozygotes and obtained one heterozygote and uh, when she observed the colored spots uh, on her uh, seeds or F1s, what she observed and in different generations, she concluded that that is because of the broken DS locus which is active in presence of AC gene. The expression of DS in maize. She performed additional experiment to demonstrate that the phenotypic effect of DS depending upon the presence of AC. She had trouble mapping both AC and DS element. However, nothing that they changed their position on the chromosome in different maize plants. In fact, further experiment showed that DS didn't just break chromosomes, but it could actually move from one chromosomal location to another. When the BZ allele example, if it causes a mutation in the BZ gene, but only when AC is present, thereby destroying the ability of BZ gene to produce any pigment at all, means in the presence of DS there won't be any uh, pigment formation. DS can also excise from the BZ allele only in the presence of AC causing BZ to revert back to its purple or brown phenotype. The amount of purple or brown depends upon when during development of DS is inserted or excised. If excision happens prior to fertilization then affected kernel will be entirely purple or brown depending upon the BZ genotype. 
Years after the Maclean Dock discovery of ACDS system, scientists were finally able to study the transposable elements in much more molecular detail. Today, AC elements are about 4,500 base pairs long and are similar in structure to the other DNA transposons. Coming to the Maclean Dock work with epigenetics. Beyond the discovery of transposable elements, her evolutionary cytogenetic research techniques, she was also the first scientist to correctly speculate the basic concept of epigenetics or heritable changes in gene expression that are not caused by changes to DNA sequence. That means the basic concept of epigenetics. Epigenetics means there is no change at the genetic level but change at the phenotypic expression. Mainly she recognized that genes can be expressed and silenced during mitosis is genetically in genetically identical cells. She proposed this theory before the molecular structure of DNA and more than 40 years before the concept of epigenetics was formally studied, thereby further cementing her reputation as an innovator in her fields. To summarize McClintock's work, first in the field of cytogenetics, she developed the carmine technique for better staining and visualization of the chromosomes. She used many of the microscopes. Then she studied the breakage fusion bridge cycle of chromosomes. Then she identified ring chromosomes in maize, identified the functions of centromere and telomeric region, nucleolar organizer region and its function. In the field of genetics, she studied genetic stability and uh, transposable elements. In the field of genomics, she worked with mapping of the different chromosomes of maize, especially the 9th and 10th chromosome. She also worked in the field of epigenetics. McClintock says transposon can provide a mean to rapidly recognize the genome in response to environmental stress. In this sense, mutations produced by transposition are a source of variation to drive the process of evolution. To summarize this, McClintock worked with many concepts like she worked in the field of genetics, cytogenetics, epigenetics and evolutionary biology. Although not widely accepted at the time of her discovery, but the observations of the behavior of kernel color alleles were revolutionary in its proposition that genetic replication doesn't always follow the consistent pattern. As a result of autonomous or activation controlled transposition at different stages of seed development, the genes of maize kernels are capable of producing variety of coloration pattern. Today she is recognized for the genetic, genomic, cytogenetic and epigenetic concepts. Thanks to these and other valuable contributions of McClintock in the field which is rigidly viewed as one of the pioneer stalwarts in the modern genetics. Thank you. I hope you understood it, this concept and if you liked this video, please do not forget to hit the like button and uh, subscribe for further updates. Thanks once again.